Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne. I'm the Sheboygan County Administrative Coordinator, and with me today is Jim Groff, the Director of the Child Support Enforcement Agency. My co-host, Dan Lemmyhew, could not be with us today, but certainly we have a lot of information to cover, and we'll get right to it. Jim is one of 23 departments, department heads, overseeing one of 23 departments, and has been with the county for some time. And why don't we begin by, Jim, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your roles and responsibilities? Sure, thank you uh, for allowing me to be here and, and uh, letting you know about what child support is all doing and about myself. Uh, I appreciate, appreciate that opportunity. Um, I've been with the county approximately 14 years, a little bit more. Um, two years as Health and Human Services uh, accounting manager, and then I transferred over to the, um, to the child support agency where I've been for the last 12 years. <clears throat> Our role as far as um, child support goes is um, to um, oversee the operation of the county's 4D program, which is um, the Child Support Enforcement Program. And we, um, we report basically to, to three different entities, uh, not only the County Board of Supervisors and, and yourself, but also to the state and, and federal governments because each of them play a, a strategic part in the, in the program that we offer to the residents of Sheboygan County. Um, we, um, we are authorized as part of the Social Security Act and that's why we're called the 4D agency because our authorization comes from Section 4, Part D of the Social Security Act. So, uh, and then we also sign a state and county contract with the um, with uh, the Bureau of Child Support at the state level, and um, we're responsible for establishing paternity for unwed people. Well, let me stop you right there for a minute because sure. right now our viewers are probably saying, "What are we talking about here?" <laughs> oh. Let, let's break it out. Child Support Agency. You've been with the county for 14 years, sure. and, and let's start real simple. What is the mission of the Child Support Agency? Our mission is uh, is to ensure adequate financial and medical support for families through an aggressive approach in locating obligors, establishing and enforcing court orders for, for child support and medical support, and uh, to establish paternity and child support collections for non-marital non non children. Very good, uh, <laughs> very good. So, and, and for 12, the last 12 years, you've been the director of the program. Correct. H how many staff do you have? I have uh, 16 full-time equivalents and uh, one LTE. Uh, 16 full-time people uh, and are divided up between administrative jobs, um, specialist work, uh, case management work, and, um, and financial work. Now you have one of the more, I think, challenging roles in the county working with child support and enforcement. And often when I think of the child support department, I think of following up with deadbeat dads or people that aren't providing support for their children. Give me a little bit of a flavor for the roles and responsibilities of your department. What, what are your staff involved with? Okay. First of all, we don't call anybody deadbeat dads because it's offensive to them. Okay. <laughs> so, My apology. And, and according to the, the state, uh, they've mandated uh, to us that we're supposed to become kinder and gentler okay. and treat uh, people as customers rather than as, uh, as enemies. And we try to we try to express that to the, the people we work with because often we are, and my staff are caught in the middle, and uh, you have one parent calling and screaming and yelling because they aren't getting the money, and another parent calling and screaming because they're paying too much money, and uh, you're caught in between with the children who you're, you're really there to serve. And that's the bottom line, correct. making sure that the children get the financial assistance, the medical assistance that they need. That's correct. So let's turn back to your staff. You said 14 staff. Talk a little 16. bit about their, or 16. <laughs> 16. Talk a little bit about their roles and responsibilities. Sure. Um, we have uh, seven or nine specialists, excuse me. Uh, the specialists are charged with uh, establishing either paternity or various orders for the collection of child support. I have two paternity people. Uh, they. Um, they take cases uh, according to the, uh, the last name of the, uh, the mother of the child. And um, it's broken down pretty much so that each one of the paternity specialists has approximately 250 cases. And then uh, there are seven non-support uh, specialists that we call. Um, and um, they, they each have approximately 550 to 600 cases um, that they are working on throughout the year. Uh, 
They're responsible for making sure that the court orders are established on a timely basis and that uh, health insurance is established for the, the care of the child and um, enforcing and uh, in some cases reviewing a court order to make sure that it's, it's not um, financially hurting either parent. Mm -hmm. how, how many specialists working with caseloads? Nine altogether. Nine, and they have between, you said, well, there's five and six hundred case? Correct. Except the paternity people who, a paternity case is, is a lot more complex than, uh, than a non-support. Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into that. There's several interviews before the child is born, after the child is born, locating um, and um, naming a father on the birth certificate are all things that uh, the paternity people have to go, have to do, and that's one reason their caseload is approximately 250 rather than, um, than the five to six hundred that uh, the wow. other specialists have. And one of the staff support people you have is the child support enforcement attorney. Correct. What is her role? Well, she not only uh, is used in the child support agency, she's also uh, assistant corporation counsel, and her role uh, uh, as that is to take care of the Chapter 51's 55 um, orders, which are for uh, placement and, um, um, I just forgot, but, and then her, the, most of her responsibility is for, for child support. And okay. child support, she acts as the, um, as the state, um, and she basically uh, is more or less interested in, um, well, I shouldn't say more or less, she is totally interested in, in what, uh, what the state would like to see done as far as the establishment of borders, and she represents the best interest of the child. Um, a lot of people are, um, are confused and concerned because they feel that, well, she's there with either the, the custodial parent or the non-custodial parent, and she's not representing or has any association with either one of those. She's um, a representative of the state and, um, and uh, works on the best interest of the child. Now, one of 23 county departments, uh, 16 staff, um, what's, what's the operating budget for the department? What kind of revenue and expenditures do you have flowing through your department? We have, um, our 2002 budget was just over a million dollars. And um, of that, uh, we generate uh, revenue um, from three different sources. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. The first one and the largest one is from the state. Uh, they contribute 66% um, of any dollar we spend, 66% is returned to us by the state because we're all part of the, the uh, TANF program and funds that is used um, for reimbursement purposes. So right now we're getting 66% back from the state. Then there's another oh, approximately 24% that comes from uh, various incentives that we can earn by uh, establishing paternity or um, making collections or uh, creating health insurance orders or medical assistance orders. Uh, and then the final 10% or less than that, depending upon what our incentives are, come from the county government who um, give us 10% uh, for tax levy. And when tax you say levy. about a million dollars for the department, is that for operations or does that include the money that uh, you're forwarding on or facilitating that gets in the hands of parents and their children? No, that's just the operations, a million dollars to operate it. The monies that, that, we, um, that we collect or help collect, I should mm -hmm. say, uh, mm -hmm. no longer come to uh, Sheboygan County. They come to, uh, it's called the Wisconsin uh, uh, Collection Trust Fund and that's located in Milwaukee. All collections for child support or spousal support or um, medical assistance or anything like that, funnel through uh, that trust fund. And I think that's a big misnomer out there. I think a lot of our viewers and people in the community may call your department and say, hey, where's my check? Send my check to me. And it frankly isn't coming into the hands of you or your staff. Again, you're facilitating or following through to make sure that the money is appropriately forwarded on and timely. Correct. Uh, we, um, oh, it was, I would say probably at least 15, 15 16 years that we um, collected money through Sh at Sheboygan County itself. So um, in 1998, uh, when the state created this uh, trust fund and said from now on, uh, local agencies, you will no longer collect any cash. Uh, 
unless there's a specific reason, and those would include if, if somebody was, um, was paying off all their accounts and they came in and said, here's the money, take it. We're not going to give it away. We'd much rather take it, accept it, receipt it, and then send it back to the trust fund and then have them distribute it to the proper sources, be it the, the mother of the child or to pay off some um, uh, birth expenses or any arrearages that may be due either to the mother or to the state or something like that. So we're not going to turn money away if they come in, but uh, we are not supposed to be collecting any money because that, that is supposed to be done through the, the trust fund. Okay. Um, and that's a good segue to giving the viewers a better feel for some of the services that you provide, the people that you're working with. And, and let's work with a couple of examples. Uh, for example, uh, give our viewers a better sense of in case of divorce. Do you work with all people when they're getting divorced and have children? Or in what cases would you work with, with a situation well, of divorce? Well, we first start working or establishing a case when, uh, when the couple has received their divorce and they must have children in order for, for us to work on it. And now the, the couple has a choice. Uh, they can either go with our services, which require them to, to fill out an application for services after the divorce, pay a $20 fee, and have an order that is, um, is um, a dollar amount order. Because we just, have a, we just had an edict that uh, started in May of last year that said we had to convert all our percentage orders, which were set at 17% or 25%, depending upon the number of children, to a straight dollar amount. And so we've been working on that for the last six, eight months. And uh, so that's one of the new criteria that we established to open up a case. We want to make sure that those orders are already a dollar amount order. Because we have until September of this year to, to finish that conversion work. So anyone, and, anyone in this community that gets divorced and has children, are they uh, identified as a case in your department? Or do you work with those individuals in all instances? We could, but uh, the only ones that we get automatically referred to us are those that um, have uh, some sort of medical assistance attached to them. If they're using um, medical assistance or if they're using uh, Badger Care or Healthy Start or something like that mm -hmm. through the Department of Economic Support, we, uh, in turn, get an automatic referral saying uh, you need to establish an order to, re uh, to recoup some of these, mm -hmm. these costs that have been paid out by the state. So earlier when I made the inappropriate comment of deadbeat dads, and, <laughs> and again, I do think a lot of viewers and a lot of people think, well, that's what child support is about, is following up on, on parents or, or fathers that aren't fulfilling their obligation. But that really isn't fair. I mean, it's much broader than that. Mm -hmm. Another example, for uh, say a young a woman comes to the office, she's pregnant, and she says that I'm not married, I'm looking for help. Is there any assistance that can be provided? Sure. Um, again, we ask her, um, the first question is, um, are you presently receiving any type of medical assistance or anything like that? Because if she does um, get that, um, then her, um, she, we waive the application fee. But she still needs to fill out an application um, and then there's an interview that's conducted with, with her to, to try and get as much information as we can because the only way we can do our job is if we communicate with the mother of the child to find out, number one, um, where, um, where she met um, the person if she doesn't know who he is uh, and get, gather any information that we can. Uh, either a friend of hers introduced her and she knows him so that we can follow up and try and, and identify who the father may be. What if the person doesn't know who the father is? Um, it makes it very difficult, number one, and um, we, we still take the case and um, we try for, um, we're obligated to try for approximately three years to try and identify who the father is. If you can't identify who the father is, is there any support that can still be provided? Any financial support? Not by anyone outside um, the agency, or not, excuse me, not by anyone like a father, unless somebody is willing to admit they are. Uh, there, is, there is state funding available, um, but um, uh, it's getting less and less to do that. Uh, we used to have AFDC, and that's been, been changed now to, uh, to W-2. But that, that program, the W-2 program, is still available and, and is used periodically. But um, we keep working uh, until we can find something. And all of a sudden, somebody will remember something, uh, and um, we'll go with that. And we're picking on dad here. 
-hmm. let's turn the tables. A young man comes in carrying <clears throat> a child and uh, is separated or going through a divorce. Um, same situation, you would follow up with the, with the mother and look at income levels and determine how much should be provided? Correct. Uh, we, uh, we do that also. And that's why when you were saying deadbeat dads before, I was going to say sometimes there's deadbeat mothers too. Right. Uh, but uh, we will do the same thing. Uh, in the case of, of the dad carrying the, the child, um, more than likely whoever he says is the mother is going to be the mother, and it's very easy to, to determine that. Um, uh, and we do do um, paternity testing right in our own office. Uh, the, the two, two paternity people uh, do a uh, buckle swab, which is taking a, a cotton swab basically and putting it on, on each side of, of the cheeks and um, swabbing that. And uh, you do that for each of the um, alleged fathers um, and the mother and the child. And then you send it all into um, to our agent that, that takes care of that processing for us, the lab that does that work for us. And uh, in about um, two weeks uh, or so, we get the answers back and uh, our paternity um, is established if it's 99% or more. I anticipate your staff have to have excellent people skills because I imagine they're getting some difficult phone calls from time to time where they're following up with people that aren't real glad to hear from your staff. Talk about that a little bit. That, that's true. I, I, I'm going to say I have an excellent staff. Um, they, they are all hard workers and, and at times they do get stressed out and um, they might seem our sound cross over the phone but uh, it's we're hoping that everybody remembers they you're one case out of 550 let's say and um, it kind of depends what happened just before or what else they're working on that day. And that's why when, when you call my agency and you, and you talk to it, the person that answers the phone is very well versed in, in all our services, in all our programs, in all the information because they can call your case up on the screen right in front of them and get all the information that has happened during the last, um, I believe, six, six years of information is, is out on the computer. So if, if they give you an answer to a question, oftentimes it's not necessary to talk specifically to the, um, to the caseworker because what they're telling you is the most current information and um, uh, they have it right at their fingertips, so it's correct information. Right. Um, and they, they really don't need to, um, and I don't want to uh, use the word bother, but there's no real need to talk to the caseworker because their work is supposed to be to make sure that the order is established to make sure it's being followed um, by the, uh, the non-custodial parent to make sure that um, it's the right rates and, and everything. And um, so their job is to follow up on that and make sure that it's, it's treating everybody equitably. Let's go back to, you mentioned the, um, the trust fund. Mm -hmm. Now, what if someone isn't receiving their check? What well, happens? Please don't call my agency. <laughs> we, um, ever since the trust fund took over, um, the, uh, the child support collection and disbursement of payments. They are the, um, the main contact for, for financial information regarding your case. If you miss a check or if your check is, is short or if, um, if for some reason you receive an extra check, if you have a question as to why that's happening, um, they are the, the ones that you're supposed to start with because they have all the information there. They know when the check was received, what um, what, what days it was from as far as the employer goes because most of, our, um, most of our checks are sent to the trust fund through the use of income withholding orders that are sent to the employer. And you said they, I mean if I'm a oh. cons constituent of Sheboygan County and I didn't receive a check, I would think it'd be a natural to look in the phone book and say I'm gonna call the child support agency and find out what's happening with this check. And you're saying that's a call not well placed. They should be contacting who? Well, they should be contacting the Wisconsin Collection Trust Fund. And uh, their number is 1-800-991-5530. And um, they ask to speak to a, a financial assistant. And uh, uh, they will be given a series of, of uh, information. Uh, I believe you have to enter your Social Security number or your case number or the, your court case number, uh, whatever you, you happen to know, in order to get the information and the trust funds a recording system will, will give you enough information so that 
If you have to go to a, um, to a live person, you can also do that. But if they call, call your department and get into the phone system, that number is provided if yes. they're asking about check right. information. We, that is one of the, um, we, have a, we have an answering service uh, through the county that, that we utilize. And uh, it's, uh, we change the information regularly. So that's, there's a lot of people that insist upon getting our, that number, getting an answer and pressing zero. And that doesn't work with our system because zero is, is not a number. It's just going to bring you back around into the same voicemail message that, uh, that we have. What you need to do is listen. And if it's a financial question, I, I want to say off the bat, I, I believe you press one. And that'll give you the information about the trust fund, including the phone number, and um, allow you to, um, to answer them. Now, going back to the facilitation, the follow through to make sure the check is forwarded on, you have staff who, from time to time, are, are dealing with individuals, I imagine, who uh, aren't real excited about <laughs> following through and sending out that check. If they don't, what's your recourse? Well, there are several, uh, several steps that, that need to be taken. Once in a while, it only takes a call from um, uh, someone from the agency or the attorney or one of the financial people uh, will call and say, we didn't receive your check. Is there, there a reason for that? And um, sometimes it's uh, the, the uh, um, non-custodial parent forgot to, to let us know that they were laid off or uh, lost their job for another reason or for one reason or another. And, um, then there's certain things that they have to do according to the court order. So you go back to the court order and you look, um, if for instance, um, they're required to do um, work searches or if they're um, required to, um, to do a number of different things. Uh, sometimes the court orders are very creative and um, they, they give them different options that they can, uh, can do. Um, we, uh, we follow up then. Um, if they, if they say, well, we're laid off, what we do is find out um, if they're going to be receiving unemployment compensation, and we can uh, issue an uh, income withholding order for, for unemployment and collect things that way. If, um, if they're retired, we can use some retirement benefits uh, or out of um, um, a, a retirement fund that they might have, we can attach to that. Now, just recently, we're able to put administrative liens and, um, and license suspensions and um, oh, that's another one that I can't remember offhand on our against people's um, estate. So the other one is uh, we can freeze bank accounts. Um, so you have a number of tools available right. to you. To, now if that individual leaves the state, does that change the rules of the game any? It does and it doesn't. Um, if It depends where the rest of the family is. If it's, if it's here in Wisconsin, uh, then we, uh, we can still process the case because we have uh, what's called uh, jurisdiction um, as long as it's the child and the custodial parent live, live here in uh, Wisconsin, we'll have jurisdiction. Now it might move from Sheboygan County to let's say Marathon County or uh, St. Croix County or someplace else depending on where she knew, moves, but as long as she's in the state, uh, I shouldn't say she, as long as they are in the state, um, we have jurisdiction. Uh, and then it depends where they move to. Uh, there are some states that are notorious for um, being very, very difficult to work with and, um, and getting information from uh, one of those is a neighbor right to the South Illinois. Um, California is another good example and uh, Texas and Wyoming, I, I believe, is another one uh, because they're just so huge that you lose a lot of information. And for instance, we send something down to California and ask them to enforce our order. We go through the, the state and through the, the local agencies and we ask them to enforce it. It's just to get an answer from them could add as much as three to six months wow. to the time frame that, uh, that we're working with. And meanwhile, you have a parent and a child or children waiting for that much needed mm -hmm. financial support. Is there any time limit to court orders? As far as uh, they're in, in, in force until the child uh, turns, uh, it's either 18 or 19 as of right now and a graduate of, of a, a high school. Um, or uh, after, I believe it's July 1st, there's going to be a change that's going to automatically change everything to 18. 
and then after that time, once they, they are graduate and are 18, then uh, child support itself is, is no longer an issue. But if there's any arrearages uh, or past due child support payments that were missed, we can collect on those for um, uh, up to 20 years uh, of the child's 18th birthday. You can hardly escape the, the press for more than a day on all the discussion at the state level with the, the budget deficit and what it may mean for local governments and what it may mean for um, people statewide in regards to providing services. What types of implications or concerns do you have with what's happening at the state level? How could that impede your ability to provide service? Well, originally when the budget repair bill was, into, was brought out, um, the governor had said something about that child support agencies should not be affected. But um, I don't think that is any longer the case. And uh, here in Sheboygan County, we're, we're part of, we're part of um, county government, and therefore we're going to be part of the solution, and uh, we're going to work as much as we need to to, uh, to see that our, our budget is going to be met. Uh, but if something does happen that uh, we're, we're going to lose funding, uh, we had uh, several staff meetings. We had uh, uh, meeting, meetings with management, and um, we came up with several suggestions um, as to what may may be required. Uh, in the worst case scenario is um, right now with the, the county's hiring freeze, we have a, an LTE that that um, we'd be lost without. We've had an LTE position for about approximately the last eight years, and they do a lot of the initial work. On, on cases and information systems and so forth. Everything is supposed to be automated into uh, the state's automated uh, collection system, which is called KIDS, which stands for Kids Information Data System. And uh, this person has been working on and off for the last eight years <clears throat> doing this type of work, trying to, to work the, the process through until it becomes automated so that um, uh, it's uh, more user friendly and is part of the system. Well, there's always new new incentives coming up each year, new, uh, new programs and so forth. So she's been working an awful long time. And if I'm not allowed to hire that person back, I'm going to have to redistribute what that person does for uh, anywhere from 25 to 30 hours a week. And some of those things that, that we may have to do um, would be to, uh, instead of having window service at 7.30 in the morning, maybe for a start at 10 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then instead of uh, we, we job share one of my staff with the Corporation Counsel's Office to, uh, to uh, take care of 51s and 55 uh, work um, that the Assistant Corporation Counsel needs to do. And we may have to pull some of that time back. So in, in short, if, if we lose some of the shared revenue that is being suggested, it's going to have implications, and as you said, it's going to have implications countywide, and mm -hmm. we're all working to be part of the solution and, and looking at how we can do the same work at less cost, and, right. and I appreciate you and your staff's efforts. Well, it's been good to have you with us today, Jim, and kudos to you and your staff because I know you have a very challenging role and perhaps one of the more important in Sheboygan County because it directly affects children and making sure that children are getting their financial resources is the financial resources they need. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you for, for having me. My, so pleasure. My pleasure. I just want to say one more thing. You know, we may not be the biggest department, but I believe we're, we're one of the hardest working departments in the, in the, uh, in the, in the county. And um, regardless what, at times, people may think that we're doing a rotten job, we are really doing the best we can, and um, we truly do work hard. And if people want more information, what number can they call? Very quickly. They can call 459 four. 301, I believe it is. 459-4301. Uh, that doesn't sound right. Let me, let me look. <laughs> I got that written down because I knew there was going to be numbers. Uh, if they just want to find out more information, uh, they can um, call 459-3041. 3041. If, um, and uh, we've, got, we've got to finish the oh, program. Thank okay. you for joining us next week, or next month, rather. It'll be a discussion of another important department, our finance department. We're in the process of kicking off the budget process, and Tim Finch is going to join us. We're going to talk about our overall budget, $130 million budget, 23 departments, and we'll share with viewers where we're at and what our goal and objectives are. So on behalf of Dan Lemminghue, County Board Chairman, the County Board, thanks for joining us today.